All right, so here we are aboard the Moon Dancer, and we're gonna go into week three, essentially, of the storyline. We talked to Captain Elena Sartell. We've got Flapjack, the uh, spell jamming flump behind her. Um, and we're gonna see where we go to this week. We have made great progress in rallying the free peoples of Remigy Space to our cause. Yet I have failed in locating Captain Zorla and Princess Sedalia's lost reign. So this is interesting. You know, so far we've concentrated on the fact that we were building a coalition of people to oppose the elves. But I guess she's been looking for the ring, or we were supposed to, it's not clear. But she has a smuggler now in Gabion space, a different solar system, crystal sphere it used to be called, a, a different system than Ramichi space where we've been operating. So we're going to go see this... Uh, this smuggler, she's a tiefling, and she sells information and antiquities. Um, she's split from her crew while in Gabion, um, so if she's not shy, we'll find her easily. Well, yes, I'm sure she'll be on the map, you know, seconds away from where we show up, probably. Uh, all right, so yeah, so before, you know, we were in Ramichi space, right, which has never been detailed in the lore of D&D as far as I can tell. Um, so we did, you know, kind of visit it. We know we did visit all these places. Um, so now we are going to Gabion space, which is the same place where those Zerixian invasions are. We did one of those. So we've got th just three planets that are highlighted as possible to meet here. And we're going to start in this big planet Gabion. Gabion space is also not detailed in any D&D lore that I can find. Uh, it's not part of the adventure that Light of Xerixis is from, the, the tabletop actual adventure. So it's kind of interesting they chose to use that much inspiration for the original story and even kind of spoil a few aspects. And maybe we'll spoil more at the end, we'll find out. Um, but then everything else is sort of very different. What you do in terms of the adventure itself is very different. So I wonder if they took a look at the adventure and just like, ah, oh, it's too hard to implement. So there's the Moon Dancer up above. We see some floating asteroids. Um, there's sort of like gray rock with bluish, more of these, you know, uh, Spanish fly or what do you got not spanish fly traps fly traps <laughs> that's what they're called right yeah uh and they are you know i used to have one of these as a kid and you put little flies in and they'd come around it's kind of cool um all right so they're gonna of course right there right we get off the boat and it's immediately two npcs one of them's fell adra so sure i may be separated from the second wind crew but i'm sure i'll find them again Okay, so we can ask what this place is. Giant-sized rocky planet covered with lush plants, extreme storms. Not many ships can dock because of these storms. When the second wind, her ship crashed trying to leave the planet, I was separated from my crew and Commodore Crux. Okay, how long ago did this happen? Um, they repaired the ship and they made an emergency departure. Okay, so they left her behind for now. Hmm, that sounds like a story. Normally smuggling is how I make coin, but I've been built up a small business here selling information artifacts. I'll rejoin them if they return. Yeah, sure, I don't believe that. All right. Nah, that's good. That is a name I haven't heard in a long, long time. So there's a little Obi-Wan uh, allusion there. All right, so, I, you know, we're kind of quote-unquote friends or whatever, acquaintances, but, you know, you're going to pay for it. So let's see what she tells us to do. Our first order of business is to help the mercenaries trapped here. Okay, so there are trapped mercenaries. A half-orc named Shazura leads their group. Um, she doesn't have the time because she's so busy, I guess, that we'll get the help. Um, and uh, yeah, you go speak to her and do whatever she says, and then maybe I'll help you. And I guess the help is to say where is the ring or where is the armada, the elven armada, something like that. I don't know. Um, so let's go over here and talk to Shazura. Powerful storms on this planet caused us to crash, separating us from the rest of our mercenary company. Yeah. What is this place? Okay, so slightly different. Kind of same concept. It's terrible storms. They tried to get supplies. Two of her ships collided, and they're waiting to rescue. Okay, so I guess this has all been fairly recent that everybody got lost here. Oh, and then vi vampires. Okay, so let's um, take a look here at, uh, I'll share here. 
So this is what uh, the Spelljammer product looks like digitally, the tabletop adventure of it. And there's a whole guide to what it's like to run in a Spelljammer. You can see different kinds of ships, which uh, you know, we haven't seen a lot of ships. We've seen the Star Moth. Uh, you know, we see there. So there's statistics for this in the D&D game. And, and you can see how big this ship actually is when you are, um, you know, when you see the whole thing of it, right? We've always been like just on this little front deck, but there's actually an upper, there's a battle deck. There's this upper castle deck that we could go to here. All these rooms that are here. Um, and then you end up on the battle deck. Um, you can go down to this main deck down here. So there's a lot of areas that we could be visiting on Star Moths, but we always end up fighting just in this little front part here, um, which is interesting. And the galleon we have is this supersized galleon that's supposed to be, um, where is it here? I don't, oh, Space Galleon. Um, so, you know, it's just a normal looking ship, but um, it's normally very small, and they made this really huge. And they did say, Captain Sartell, when we first meet her, she says, you know, it's a souped up or something i don't know it's a huge and then big version if you will um but yeah so that's the kind of thing you find in like the the rules side of things um and then we can go to the astral menagerie and this covers all the creatures and we can see vampires and vampires are vampires basically they're there are dead pirates who refuse to go quietly into the afterlife they're, they're not they're sort of vampire-ish but and they have fangs like a vampire but they don't actually bite you and draw blood they're not actually the same thing they kind of pull energy from you by either touching you or from afar and if they kill you they don't turn you into a vampire they turn you into a shadow so they say that often there are shadows around them because of how they feed and we can see art there of what they look like and there's a vampire vampire the captain a vampire mage um so that's kind of cool so it shows you a little bit what that looks like um, and we are now going to continue with our quest. So there are vampires. They want to eat them. And so as part of this deal with Fel, we're going to help Shazura. Shazura says, place vampire wards. Uh, I guess to keep them away, but they're not really vampires. But I don't know, somehow there are wards that she has and also recover supplies. So sure. Sometimes things just kind of weirdly work and never win her with this sort of like magic concept that isn't really like what the game normally does, but okay. So yeah, we see that it's kind of a muted kind of appearance, but it's, it's arboreal. It's got a lot of rockiness. And interestingly, no sign of storms. Like shouldn't be raining constantly or something. That's cool, little glowing lights, that's neat. These are kinds of cool features, right? They can put when you're describing an adventure and spell jam or two. It's a, it's a good thought, right? Like describe things differently, right? Giant pitcher plants, giant uh, fly trap plants. Um, you know, that can be all fun. We see some vampires here, an archer, a bosun. So we get that kind of nautical feel from their names. Um, not particularly tough. They, they turn to mist when we take them out. It's just like some vampires do. It's a slightly different visual effect though. That looks like equipment there, but we can't use it. We've got to get to somewhere on a map here. And it's a pretty big area, reasonably large. And I see there's a heroic encounter in this area. All right, so here's there we're supposed to be. We see like a crashed ship here. So clearly a number of people have um, come down. Oh, we can do some damage. Let me just stand in one place. But we are going to take him down and... Uh, we get to come over here and there is a place to collect mercenary supplies in the ruins of this ship. And there is a place to put a vampire ward. And when we do that, I think we... These guys showed up, I think, as part of the quest, but then there were also, you see, a shadow. So they did that part of the lore really well, you know, to integrate that. And I guess this area kind of tears into the vampires. Um this warded area. Um, I wonder if you could climb this ship and see any features of it, sort of, maybe, not really. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that's where we're gonna do this. We're gonna take out groups of the vampires. Uh, I don't see a little equipment place. So maybe, uh, maybe this side, yeah. Maybe. Deck officer, they, they don't seem to do fantastically interesting things, but there's some mercenary supplies. Again, it's hard to see. Mercenary supplies, and I think 
Where is the glowing? There it is. Vampire Ward. It's really hard to see. And that summons these vampires who are then going to very smartly throw themselves into this field and say, oh no. <laughs> Avast. I like they put a little pirate talk in there just to, to make you feel good. So yeah, so let's do this a couple more times and then we'll tune back in. All right, so here is our eighth group of vampires. We put a vampire ward. We put in, we collect our mercenary supplies. We've done each eight times. And now I guess we've saved the planet. No, there'll probably be something else to do. Let's find out. So we zip back. We're just gonna ignore any bad guys we see. Be wary. The vampirates are out. We're capable in a fight, but you have a completely different set of All right. skills. We did the best we could to... Each day, the vampirates get closer to our camp. When my crew goes out in search of food, they end up becoming the very thing okay. we seek. We so it's basically just beat up vampires, I guess? I already did that, but I'm going to do that more? Yeah, defeat 30 vampires. Jeez, like, there are three quests, probably, in this quest line. Did we really need to make it that boring to just go murder stuff? Like, uh, <laughs> video games sometimes, like... Give me something more interesting, like recover the, the supplies you need to bring back to the ship or, you know, there's a story of what's over there and let's go find that ruin or whatever. But but no, we're just going to go beat up some vampires. So, uh, yeah, I will do that. And when I'm done taking out 30 of these evil folks, then uh, we will resume, see where the quest and story takes us. So I went around the planet, and uh, one thing we do find is Space Commander Arlock, who is some sort of uh, oh, guy, but he uh, something the thing that is annoyingly defensive. There he is. So this looks like a vampire. Yeah, he's got some vampiric things and some various powers. Ouch, took out my companion. He's got some neat powers, that's for sure. Especially when he couples uh, powers together. Nice little teleportation around to kind of fool us. Um, Arclock is his name. Arclock. Archer? No, it's Arclock. Arclock. Yep, Space Commander. Ground control to Space Commander Arc Lock. Well, despite that, it's gonna be the end for you, buddy, with your stupid moving circle. Cheater. Yeah, you're still going down. Yeah, so formidable this Space Commander Arc Lock. Sure takes forever to beat you. Good grief, look at that. Way too many hit points on these things. And I get 20 wild space doubloons for completing that guy. But I did manage to take down uh, the absurd 30 vampires, plus that guy as a bonus. And now I go through this very dark area. I was hoping to see some sort of interesting features, and we found that little boss guy. But otherwise, this all just kind of looks like not very... Nothing too incredible. I was hoping maybe be something sort of fun to explore or see, but it looks pretty typical. And no additional quest here, so we must be done. We'll go to Fel Ardra. The vampires are certainly a problem around here, but they don't venture too close to our camp, thankfully. Now that you have Shazura on your side, I'm sure she'll be able to assist you when you okay. decide so we have another ally, even though we came at it through the idea of information, we ended up with the same concept, you know, gathering allies, which is fine. All right, so now the drunken squid. Huh. So same formula. We did three quests. We're going to go to another place in Gabion space. The asteroid high turn, thriving space stuck, but st dock str struck by some mysterious object. Trap the souls of those unable to flee. And that's cool. And, and honestly, one of the things I love about Spelljammer as a campaign, and I loved this back in the second edition days, 
is that when you're running the tabletop game, you can just have it be sort of like Star Trek, where you just go down on a spaceship or on a, on a, on a planet and you describe that planet to everyone. It's a desert planet or it's an ice planet or jungle planet or whatever. And then you just throw some fun ideas there and you roll with that. And when you're, when you're like, we've done a few quests here, we've had fun. Well, let's go to another planet, right? Let's explore something else, get a quest that takes you elsewhere. You find a map or something and you have a reason to go to somewhere else. And then you change it up again. And now it's like, you know, storm planet or whatever. And that's kind of what they're doing here. And that's totally fine. So we're going to go to this asteroid, uh, high turn. We are going to meet with, uh, well, I guess the zombies, land, uh, something landed, something hit the planet, struck the planet, uh, the asteroid, and caused people to turn into undead. Um, so... You know why we don't know well they carry highly valuable magic medallions and so she wants to sell these to her clients so all right philastra we will do it we will board our ship and we will go to asteroid high turn and we can guess we'll go to asteroid tanis next given the names of it we get lore as usual um and this is kind of the same information they all told us the ghosts of the crew of the drunken squid wait hopelessly to be released from their torment while their physical bodies amble about okay so it's sort of a dissociation uh asteroid there's our ship the moon dancer cool looking that's for sure yeah you can just take it all in pretty neat that's pretty cool um and then uh actually this looks like it's kind of the same map they keep reusing this map and then they add like docks or whatever to it <sighs> you know i get it like budgets all of that and they've been laying people off and things like that so it's it's you do what you got to do but sometimes you feel like they spend energy Ooh, cool voices on certain things that aren't useful like i'm glad they spend them on these voices this is neat Okay. Yeah, so kind of the information we heard before, thriving space dock, uh, my crew are wandering like mindless fools, they forgot the code they once swore, um, uh, because all pirates now have to be under the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean concepts. So they actually want the medallions too. So okay, we'll see kind of how that goes, but I guess go take down the bodies to free the souls is kind of the concept. And really, we can just go anywhere around here and immediately engage in vampire, or I mean zombie slaying, not vampires. These are totally different creatures, that's right. These deckhands. And did I get any medallions? No. So it's going to be one of those things. You know, like every one of them story-wise has a medallion. But hey, you're going to have to kill hundreds of them because that's how it works. medallions maybe i'd be like further in the zone or something but probably it's just a really bad drop rate oh drop rates it's my fault here i am playing a game that you know has to deal with drop rates instead of just a story so um i think i picked up a medallion there so there was a little something that i was kind of landed right on me so okay and looks like there's a kind of neat some kind of town? So maybe they must have, people must have lived here in addition to the people. I go, go service the docks. That's right, because it was a docking spot. Uh, looks like we're about on the edge of the area, so I don't know if I'm supposed to take out these guys or not. Let's see if they drop any medallion. Zombie clerk, zombie grocer. That's kind of funny. You gotta appreciate that. Like nothing worse than the zombie grocer. Uh, absolutely no medallions, so I think I want to not fight those folks, and let's go further into the zone. Can't go this way. Nice that they have torches that light forever in an area that barely has an atmosphere. But, okay. More deckhands, drunken squid crew. They had a lot of crew on this ship, I'll tell you what. And very few medallions. These stories of medallions are overrated. Um, so there's lots of potential zones. Where are ye, crew? What is this? Little treasure chest? Ooh, treasure chest. Who can't who can say no to a treasure chest? Look at that. Even when it's nothing useful or interesting. Ooh, there's a first mate. Hello, first mate. You look dangerous. Yeah, big zombie attack. Oh, he was gonna do something there. 
And that gave me a, some, look at that. What? I got them all. Now I have to sanctify drunken squid bodies. I think that ship makes it kind of funny because it sounds like you're going to do things related to squids. Is this? Is this not, ah, there's another of these quests where I can barely see. Did you see that? So there was a body the whole time. If you saw that body before, you know, well done. I didn't. And uh, so I have to sanctify the body. Okay. Well, I just murdered like eight people. Why am I only sanctifying one body? I don't know, but I have to sanctify six bodies. And maybe I can just go back to where they used to be. Um, can I just like go to all the different spots I was? Uh, and, and generally, you know, these games do some things that I really would not do design wise, which is take you back to the same spot and force you, you know, like if I waited too long, I'd have to fight these guys all over again but now to sanctify bodies, right? So it's like, you gotta be careful not to force players into doing the same activities over and over again. Uh, especially when a lot of times there's a bigger map involved. Like, I mean, are you gonna take me to this whole map? If not, why am I having to do things in the exact same area, right? Like, make it kind of interesting. Um, it's in, one thing that's been fun is they've played with gravity in different ways. This gravity is sort of like, when you jump, I think you might drift a little further than normal in the game so it's slightly asteroidly feeling but not entirely here we go Woo! six bodies all sanctified i'm a hero and let's see that was two quests so if you are doing the math at home i believe i'm gonna have one more quest and i'll be done with this place let's see if the formula stays true I don't entirely mind the three quests. Uh, you know, if you remember the very first Neverwinter video I did was on Dreadring. Dreadring had a three ring quest series that was colorful and fun. Okay. So now, free trapped souls by defeating fr drunken squid crew. Okay, somehow I got all enough i don't know i got some number of i got enough medallions somehow that all i need to do is kill some of these guys and it'll be fine and we're gonna go to the ship and interesting there's a whole nother ship here uh so i'm just gonna go i'm gonna see oh that's cool that moon is neat that's pretty neat i like that um okay but uh so i'm gonna just kind of for fun travel a bit i was hoping there'd be something interesting like a one of the little glowing orb things. Um, oh, that's cool. There's skeletal horses there. Do you see that? That's kind of fun. They're like undead horses. That's cool. That's pretty neat. And there's like, oh, zombie chickens. <laughs> Can you kill the zombie? Yeah, you attack the zombie chickens. They are not hard to kill zombie chickens, which I guess, honestly, that's fair. That's what I'd expect. Um, more bad guys here. And, hey, look. It looks like the Moon Dancer. It, it even has the same logos, but it's not the Moon Dancer. And we don't need to go there, apparently. We need to go to this other ship. So that's a shame, right? Because, I mean, and I get it. Again, they're trying to, like, save money, right? But um, there are all these neat kinds of ships. They're, like, hammerhead ships, and there are you know, squid looking ships and uh, crab ships that have like little pinchers that's super cool. Uh, and and then we end up on the same ship. Like this, this is exactly our ship. Uh, definitely a little more gravity here. Um, so, I guess we're just gonna, ooh, they explode in like acid stuff. That's no good. But here we are with the ballistas and there are these first mates and Oh, so I guess the idea is that the soul is tied to them. So when we kill the first mate, and does that spirit fly off? Maybe? Sort of? Hmm. Yeah, so it otherwise just looks like, oops, like our normal ship. And we're just gonna take out the bad guys. Okay. This guy even attacking back doesn't look like it. Anyway, it's a strange world, and go to the front. Did someone come after me? Yeah, somebody came after me. Three enemies. Um, can we go down below? Let's find out. 
Whoa, slow fall. It's like slow. It's not super jumpy. It's more like slow fall. That is really neat to look through these guys. Though. I, I like that. That is such a neat effect. Um, okay, so if we go, yeah, there are bad guys down here as well. But it otherwise seems to look exactly like our ship, which is a little disappointing. I would have loved to have seen a different ship, an interesting ship. Because one of the things that's spelled down it's cruel, that's cool is seeing the different ships. And in fact, getting to pilot them is neat too for the players. Um, you want to keep that, you know, interesting and, and make them feel like, yeah, the world's full of interesting stuff. It's space, right? You want to see different spacecraft and, um, yeah, different kinds of neat things like the the, scorp uh, is it the scorpion ship I th or the crab ship. I forget what it is. That, you know, maybe both. They can grab another ship with those pinchers. Okay, I guess we're done. We have murderized enough of these guys and returned their souls. We can now come up out of our ship and go back to Hira and oh I think I just died <laughs> and again that's not correct lore uh, what's supposed to happen is I'm supposed to float bob back and forth until I reach the sort of plane of gravity in the ship but it killed me which actually is a shortcut to getting here so that was very very clever of me Hira Stargazer what's up Wait. No pun. Oh, yeah, that's good. No pun I, I get that now. Okay, so they are, I guess, gonna sail away, which is interesting, but yeah, you incorporate yourself, and yeah, we're all done, and we're gonna go back to Fel Ardra, it says in our little side quest thing. So we're not going back to town, to home yet, the Moon Dancer. We're going to Planet Gabion and Fel Ardra check in and see what you've got for me. I knew I'd heard that name before. Hunts get the Yankee and Illithids. Cool. Okay, good. Yeah, it was okay that we didn't bring you medallions. Cool. Uh, but she's going to go there herself. Okay. Right, next planet time. We did three quests. We're going to go to Asteroid Tannis. has Tanisian crystals, powerful crystals, um, based on magic. That's interesting. These remind me of... Um, Another type of crystal, which which they used recently in 5e lore, but they changed how it worked, that could boost your spells, as they're saying these can. Um, but I don't know that I've ever heard of Tennessean crystals, so I think this is just kind of made up. Um, the Empire has shown up, imprisoned dwarven mining up uh, miners, so we're gonna go help. So let's go to this asteroid. So we're you know taking it to the elves, going back to the original enemy. Very cool. Gabion space and our last planet asteroid Tannis. So we can imagine that the story here will change in some way, right? And if I look at the campaign, this is interesting because this is sort of like I don't know how many campaigns it's been in a row where when you reach sort of like a third, a quarter, what is this like a it's not quite a half, but somewhere around this point, the campaign has gotten then just sort of like it's run out of story. I'm I'm hopeful that this won't happen this time, right? So that we've visited all the planets at least that we can see on the map so this will be our last planet <laughs> that's too bad um because we're not you know we're, we're like a third a little over a third between a third and a half of the way through and we we're gonna have been to all the planets so what comes after this let's find out well are they just gonna reuse content uh are we gonna be like making a magic item you know uh, we'll see so okay so first of all here's our ship uh, this looks like, yes, it's exactly the same asteroid, but it's got uh, a star moth docked here. And there's the BHE, the big heroic encounter area. Um, but it's otherwise the, the asteroid map. They have decorated the asteroids with these green glowy crystals, which look awesome. The sky looks awesome. Hats off to the art crew. Kind of some kind of moon, or maybe that's the sun off there since it's that radiant. I don't know. But it looks amazing and, and fun idea. You want to, you know, dress everything up with cool features. And let's see what our Master Dwarf has to say. Malad Maladern Ironforge. Ironforge, I mean, that's right out of the Dwarf playbook. Okay, so what is this place? Uh, probably worth more than most planets you've seen. One of several moons that they told us asteroid. Okay. Circling the lava super planet Kalixor. That's a neat idea. This is the only one with these rare green crystals. 
they're a mystery to even the learned scholars. Um, maybe they're divine, maybe they're natural, but they amplify spells and artifacts. Cool. So I would hope that there's an artifact out there that uses this stuff. That would be really cool. And we are going to defeat Astral Elves because they are hurting the elves and I guess trying to use up these crystals. So it makes sense. Uh, let's recharge our buffs, pick up our things, and we are going to go take down some elves kind of in some little zone here. A lot of times these the, the murder quests, you know, kill X whatever's work no matter kind of what. Uh, let's test that theory. So this will either be zero or two. Yeah, it's one elf we've defeated and this is two. So even though it sort of said do it in that zone, really it can be anywhere. A lot of times that's the case. Uh, this is a lighter gravity area here, which is kind of fun. Um, so here we go, elves. And they have a bunch of like these kinds of magical effects. They have a fury drake, uh, rogue, ambassadors, our spellcasters. Uh, Bowman. They have lots of little annoying, yeah, zones and things like that. I mean, and some annoyance is fine, right? But the high priest and the ambassador are spellcasters, and they can create sort of bad zones that you have to run out of, which is it's fine. A little bit is fine. Here's some more. So we have to again thirty. So let's take down thirty. Uh, by the way, the, this mount is a lot of fun for people who are D and D fans. This is the Tensor's Floating Disc. Uh, which is a spell that wizards cast. So when you invoke the mount, if I, if I get off of it and I press my button to invoke, you're going to see a guy shows up, wizard shows up and casts the spell for me and lifts me up, right? And then that spellcaster vanishes. And now I can just sort of zip around on it, which is not something normally you use it to just carry stuff. Um, and it follows you, the caster, around. But in this version of it, you can actually use it as a mount, which is quite fun. I heard you gave a bunch of those imperial villains so much to their punishment. I did. He's going to send his team on vacation. Okay, yeah, I guess. Uh, okay, so they've been attacking the crystals, which I think we already knew. But now they want us to go and take out bad guys. So let's take out bad guys. Looks like we can even go this way. Oh, not that way. This way. So come around and hey, look, treasure chest. <laughs> this treasure chest is in the same place as another treasure chest. That's funny. Um, and we, we, like on a different asteroid. And there's some bad guys here, and we can see there's crystals or something we need to do. So we need to collect crystals and then destroy supplies. Okay, so let's see. So destroy crystals. And then, oh, look at that. Whoa, what is happening? There are some bad guys and a lot of them. I'm going to jump into the sky and come down with a big damaging zone. Because that's a lot of you fellas. Wow, that is wild. That's a lot of bad guys. Does this happen every time? Because I don't want a piece of this. Uh, you can see my hit points going down and up as I try to stay alive. Wow. That was some pain. That was a death trap. Okay. Ooh, look. Beholder. That's cool. Rauxel. Sounds like Rexavort. Uh, all right, let's see how bad this boss is. Um, so you, of course, being a beholder, have eyes, and the visuals for them don't really show up, so I can't even tell when you're doing things. Great. Uh, I will just stand here and get blown to bits by you. i try to dodge that. I don't know where to... Oh, there it is. Okay, those I see. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, dodging it, dodging it, bucking and weaving. Ooh, I think you did red stuff. I'm trying to escape the red zones. I just can't quite see them. Oh, there's the red zone. I see it a bit. Fades into the purple a little too much for my taste, but... All right, Roxol, you are going down. Aha! And all I get for that are some wild space doubloons. Be cool if there was something to go explore or something, but nope. Just you chilling there. Um, getting closer to the ship. That's kind of neat. See, I think a quest should be like, go to the ship. Go do stuff on the ship. Cool. I like this. Star Moth. Ooh, there are uh, places on board. 
So I've hopefully left them behind. We'll find out if they follow me up here. I'll probably die if they do. So there's no boss here. I was a little worried there'd be a boss standing up here at the entrance to the Star Moth, but no, it looks like no. Um, and I can destroy a thing. I don't see a crystal I can pick up. So we'll get ready to run. See if it works this time. I think it worked. All right. All right, I collect my last crystal here. Whew, that was a lot. So we have done the two quests, which means there's gonna be... No, we did. We started with taking out elves, and then we did two. So this should be three quests. And we talked to Maladern. See if the formula holds. I did, da da da. We got the crystals, they're gonna ship out. So we're all set, and we go back to Felardra. Nothing else to do here, nice. Yeah, we push them back. We've got Tunisian crystals in route, which will get us some coin. So now they're saying there's a preemptive strike going on for an innocent planet system. Uh, we haven't found Captain Zorlar's ship and the ring we need, um, but we can get some star charts. Okay. And for that, it's saying we go to an invasion, which there is actually one right now. I don't know if there'll be time to join it. Let's see, we'll try. So we go to a Zerixian invasion, which you've seen me do before. And we have, oh, eight minutes, good. So plenty of time. And we will jump around here and go to one of these chests. We'll just go over this way, maybe. Zoom around. This is the same place we went before, and there are these three areas where you can loot the supplies. I think this is what they mean by the chest. Yep, that's it. So we got that quest. We can just leave here, I guess. Go back to the Moon Dancer now, or do we go back to, no, we go back to Planet Gabion. So all through Felardra, our new kind of quest giver. Um, there we go. We're going here. And... Sounds like the Empire put up one heck of a fight. No, I snuck in and went to the chest. Going up against an armada probably wasn't the best. Okay, you look at the star chart. It's authentic, hastily constructed, shores where their star moth is currently moored. So your spell jammer should have no problem locating his ship. Okay, so apparently we can go to the guy who was holding the princess captive and uh, go back to Captain Sartel. All right, so we've finished this kind of area. We've got a star chart. And we'll go back to the Moon Dancer. Locate the dirty, deceit. dirty deceit. That must you be the ship's name. Okay. Okay. So it looks like I have filled my bar of a hundred things. So I, I managed to do this next kind of spot. Um, in the quest, I get some rewards. I get you know the boon points we've talked about before that are kind of you know fine. Um, they did redo them, so they're a little more interesting now. But but it's kind of you know just sort of the doohickeys that are part of this. And we um, now have to wait another week to see what the quest will hold. Uh, we'll take a little sneak peek. The dirty seat. Okay, so maybe we're gonna go at this ship and recover the ring. That'd be kind of fun. I'm glad at the concept that maybe there's more story here. I'd like. I feel like there should be more story. So we'll tune in next week and see where the story takes us from here. Do we get the ring we need? Uh, do we have what we need to go up against the prince to take the princess and give her power over the elves and maybe they stop this invasion and these seeds that they've planted on planets that are going to destroy them? So Captain Zorlar is the guy, I think, I don't know, I don't think he's quite the guy we met at the beginning, but one of them maybe, or maybe it is the same guy. Anyway, his ship, we found where it was using the star charts that we located. It's around this planet, Thavius Prime. Cool, all right. And uh, Flapjack has set an ambush course with us, coming upon the star moth from above, using the light from the nearby star to mask our approach. Cool. I like the concept, so we're going to swoop in and kind of drop in on them, and I'm not sure what. Uh, but this, you know, what I love about Spelljammer, when I think back on my days being a young and playing Spelljammer, it was all about the fact that you could 
um, run these really cool space battles and you would just be like firing catapults and ballistas and then you'd maybe choose to board, but you'd, you'd, you'd see destroying other ships. Like you would do that, right? And we have not done that in this and it's actually quite hard to do it in the role-playing game in 5th edition, which is a, kind of a problem for me because I like that kind of action. But let's see what we get into here because we're apparently going to drop down with the cover of a bright star to jump on this ship. So we go to Gabion Space and we go to the Dirty Deceit. Now let's see what happens here. Okay, so I'm on the back of the ship. And it looks, oh, high gravity. And it looks really pretty. Oh man, look at that. So one thing I notice is we have two star mods, not the one. And looks like we have fighting inside our ship. How'd that happen? Can I talk to Flapjack? No. All right, talk to Captain Elena. We're under attack. Zorlar knew we were coming. All right, one thing about Spelljammer that, that it's probably important to, men, to mention is this is not Star Trek. There aren't teleporters. Now, yes, there is teleportation in Dungeons and Dragons, but you can't just like move your attack crew to a ship without ramming into it and boarding it. Uh, so I don't know exactly how this happened, but okay. Uh, somehow our plan was ambush them and instead it's going to be defend people on our ship. And so we're definitely not getting that ship combat. I mean, apparently they use ship combat on us because I don't know. It's all very confusing, but let's come here and start tearing into these, uh, Xerixian soldiers. Um, they are kind of, you know, like the folks we've fought before. They can do their shielding and the magic and all this sort of stuff. Uh, that way is blocked, but we can go down the stairs. Woo. Oh, I can't go apparently over the stairs, but we can go around and down the stairs and there's more fighting. This many people got under a ship, right? So remember, no teleportation, uh, you know, unless it's like, you know, a small spell that can take a few people, but there are dozens of intruders on our ship. How did this happen? I don't know, but uh, it's just the weirdness that sometimes happens in these kinds of games. Um, I, I mean, like they even have their, their lizards along here for the ride, you know, like, oh, and I like this, the crew. So we, we come upon the crew and when we help, they just hang out there, right? Like here, crew fighting. Let's see if we can defeat them. Uh, let's defeat them. Bum, 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 bum. There's one more here, some kind of stealth drake. And uh, got some dudes here. So we take these guys down and now the crew just kind of go over to their side and just hang out there. Great. And there's a boss here, so we'll just, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just saying that maybe the crew should help out. But it's okay. If, if they're not fighters, that'd be great. But, you know, we're on a spelljammer ship, and usually your crew does stuff. They fight. They do the things. Oh, what are you going to do? All right. Uh, Lieutenant Doctor taking you out. Hurry topside and help the others. Okay, so topside we go. So we run through here. Boop, 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 boop. But wait, there's bad guys, so we'll jump in on them. There's that star moth we saw before. Oh, there's nothing on this side. So we have a, we've been completely surrounded under this plan. Oh, no, I'm going back up. Uh, this plan we had apparently backfired and then we woke up were we asleep when we went to the star like what happened i i want answers so our decks are also full what do i have one two at least three star moths and uh red zone explosions and i'm not getting that ship to ship combat like you know what i would like is actually if i could like take out a group here and then fire the ballista at that star moth. I think that would be kind of cool. But um, that's the kind of thing that I would definitely do in a role playing game. Like you gotta free the area and then you can get a shot off and then, you know, go free the area. I don't know, something like that. But um, lots of Xerixians, doobie doo. All right, almost there. One last Xerixian rake. But I mean, look at that sky. 
Uh, the gameplay might sometimes be a little strange, but boy, that sky is special. All right. Envoys and rakes and drakes. Rakes and drakes. That sounds like the name of a restaurant. And you are down and... Looks like two more groups to go. I like how they give us a percentage. You have must destroy another 40% of elves. Hey, look. 20% defeated. 20% elves. All right, here we go. Taking you down. Ba, 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 ba. All right, we did it. Use the catapult. Okay, hey, look, we're going to get some siege engine type stuff. So let's see how this plays out. We go around here. There is one big, huge catapult, which, by the way, suddenly this catapult's here. We have all these ballistas. Like, I could have used any of those ballistas. But all right, let's go here, fire the catapult. And the answer is probably because they had this catapult from the big heroic encounters. And so we can use it. Oh, the other thing I'm seeing is, is look, there's like stuff being thrown at us as well, apparently. Oh, look, they're docking, I guess, next to us. So is that the end of, yeah, I, can, I, I fired one catapult and that's it, we're done. So it says, jump across to Zorlar's Starmoth, defeat Zorlar, Zorlar and his crew. Um, yeah, I guess that's a fun reason you don't need like a uh, boarding ramp because you can just make that jump like I just did because low gravity. Which, by the way, in the actual tabletop role-playing game, there isn't low gravity on a ship like that. I mean, you could argue there should be, but, but there isn't. You just have normal gravity plane halfway through the mass of the ship. Um, but okay, whatever. So we jumped across. It definitely is fun in the game. Like, you know, you see everybody jumping around and stuff, so I'm not complaining. I'm just informing. Since this is a lore show, the lore would not be that you sort of jump like you're on the lunar landing. Um, so this is, you know, right out of that first combat we did at the very beginning, first time we were on a star moth. There's a boss hiding back there. There's no sense in necessarily in our fighting everybody at once. So we might as well just take these folks out here leisurely and then go in for the boss. And um, and, I, and it definitely looks like I'm not getting any ship-to-ship -ship combat destroying ships. Uh, it's, you know, it's just going to be just the just that one firing of a catapult so all right let's uh try to take this guy down captain zorlar he is the guy we came to get so i mean i guess plan wise it's still our well it's not our plan it's our purpose which is we're taking this guy down um so we will um but um but yeah it's 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 uh not super great in terms of uh strategy we probably lost a lot of men but uh oh once again, he runs off. Okay. And take the ring of shooting stars. All right. So we got our ring of shooting stars. We accomplished the goals just totally differently. Um, and I'm again. Oh, let's see. <laughs> that's fun. Sort of maybe I can go up this way. Yeah, that's kind of fun. All right. And now our captain is here. Sure. Bravely. Well done. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Let's get out of here. And even though I'm in a ship, I'm going to go through a little teleporter thing. Oh, I guess they're still firing at us. That's kind of fun. Um, okay. I'm curious what's next. Uh-huh. Where am I here? Turn in my quest. So I guess Dirty Deceit was they, be they like, knew we were coming. That's, that's the name of the quest. Prince Zelith must have been tipped off by one of the planets we assisted. Fel wouldn't betray me no matter how much coin the Empire might have offered her. That's weird, because she's actually the one person I would suspect. We got out of there just in time. I didn't think we should we would make it, but your skill certainly saved us. With the Ring of Shooting Stars in a possession, we can begin planning our journey to Xerixis space. So we were told the Ring of Shooting Stars, uh, the princess told us, that we can use it to destroy um, the whatever it is that's causing sort of the astral seeds to germinate on our world and tear it apart. Um, by the way, before we saw how the ship changed when we did quests... Same is true here. So you can see Guma, the Astral Scourge, is here with his like weapons and something. And we have over on this end the uh, elf, Keldir, and the little kind of thing we set up for him with the stones and flowers. So, you know, again, that's cru I, cool. I dig how like 
as we've added people to our ship, they have shown up here. Well, it looks like Felardra is now in this corner. Oh, that's neat. So, so apparently, you know, joining our ship. I like that idea, right? And that's a cool thing for like a tabletop game that you would um, meet people and then they join, like one of their representatives would join the ship and then come and like you'd see them over time, right? Grandmaster, Grandmaster Nasraka there. Um, and that looks like kind of it, I think. And once we get to, you know, I guess we're going to get to 500 this week and it'll be a whole nother week before we trigger whatever this event will be. So that's probably when we'll get the next, it might be two weeks before we get the next bit of story. So hope you've enjoyed this. We're going to cover more Spelljammer lore next time. If you like the work that I do, please consider going to the drive through RPG site to pick up the two products that you see here or to the DM Guild to find my work that is available there. If you go to alphastream.org, you can find lots of ways to support me, from Patreon to checking out my videos like this one, reading my blog, supporting the podcast of Mastering Dungeons. And you will find that if you join my Patreon, you will get both of these products that you see here for free. And just signing on to my mailing list at alphastream.org will get you one of them for free. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my work.